We are going to jump right in because there is a lot of cuts. I had a hundred plus cuts easily and I did it all with this Harbor Freight 14 inch abrasive chop saw. I would say if you're going to do a design like mine, it is a must have tool, period. My design was pretty simple. I knew what the overall length needed to be and an approximate height. After that, it was kind of just all thrown together and see what looked good. I did get the crazy kind of angle idea from a YouTuber that made a barn door, not out of metal, out of wood, but hey, I mean, if it's out of wood, why not try it out of metal, right? So with that, I really did just lay it out and piece it together bit by bit. Only in my wildest dreams would I have a welding table that big. So yes, it is laid out on my garage cement floor, which is uh, flat enough. Uh, you really you can't tell that big of a difference. But one of the key things which is critical is to get the spacing of each of those perfectly. And that is done just with some simple wooden blocks. You wouldn't think with all of the crazy angles that it would make that big of a difference. But it will stare at you crooked like an unlevel picture frame. If you thought there were a lot of cuts that needed to be done, well buckle up because there is a lot of welding. And I did a majority of those welds with my Lincoln 140. It's a great MIG welder. MIG, yes, it does use gas. Now if you don't have a MIG welder, you don't have to go out and buy one. At the very end I actually did do some of the touch up welds, some, uh, some extra pieces, we'll get into that later, with my Cheap Harbor Freight Titanium 125 welder. It's one of the cheapest welders on the market and it does an awesome job. So if you're just getting started with welding, no need to go out and buy an expensive one. You can go with a cheaper one until you learn and if you like it, well, then you can always upgrade. Some people like the welds, some people don't. I personally do. But on half of this, I actually ground down the welds and then with a flapper disc, I simply flapper it, flapper it? Yeah, sure, why not? And that makes it shiny and smooth. So if you like that, go with that. And if you like the weld shown, then keep the weld. Here I'm using mineral spirits to clean up all the welds and to clean up the metal. Yes, it does have some oily substances and residues kind of left over from all the processes. And then it is a very simple rattle can, couple coats of spray paint. I'm going to take it back inside where we demo the railing, which was super easy. A couple screws, one swipe of the sawzall, and uh, really just taking out some nails. Here's a little preview for you. Here in about three or four months, this entire wall is going to be gone. For those few of you that are long-term subscribers and have wondered why I don't put out more welding videos, it's uh, pretty much I didn't have a garage for a year because we were doing our home edition. Now that that's done, I can get back to my garage projects. So with an opened up garage now, I can actually make these adjustments needed because, well, yes, that tearing down a wall, yeah, kind of changed things a few inches. So I actually just had to chop off the brackets, extend them out about an inch and a half, welded them on, and we are back in business now. The couple months that this was installed prior to our addition, uh, the top railing was actually attached to the wall with these wood block things, and I did not like it one bit. So when I put it back up, you can actually see that I went directly to the wall on the top with the metal bracket, and then I did include uh, space for the baseboards on the bottom. So planned that, so I took the measurements accordingly, and everything worked out just fine. No, 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 wait a minute. Everything worked out perfect. I didn't have to hammer this sucker in. It fit like a glove, except for that little spot that needs some touch-up paint. Wait, 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 wait. We're not done. We still have the top rail to do. And 
uh, well, I went as cheap and simple as you could get. That is a 1x3 pine board, and back when I got it last year, it was like 8 to 10 bucks. So who knows now, it's probably 50 bucks. Regardless, uh, all I did was uh, cut it to length, gave it a nice simple sand, and well, if you could see what type of stain I was using, it is a Minwax Espresso Color. And if you took note of my beautiful new floors, that is the same color I used for my hardwood floor. The railing does match the floors, and it look in the background, it does match the railing for the stairs as well. To attach it, I'd actually pre-drilled some holes through the metal railing, and so to match mark those, I just... I don't know, stuck a little drill bit up through it, made a little mark on the wood railing, uh, just did a little pilot hole because I didn't want it to crack, and then I was able to then go up on top and screw it from the bottom up to the top. I went, put it on top, and then screwed it from the bottom. Did you follow that? Well, I'm not going back because we are done. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Yes, I am a small enough YouTuber that I actually do read the comments and love the feedback. Uh, tell me a project you've done or criticize my work. And uh, maybe I'll learn for next time. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.